This is the deep reservoir. At over 180 acres, it supplies drinking water to much of southern England and happens to be one of the most captivating venues I've ever fished. However, it came at a cost. Well, it has been a long time since I barrowed down this path, down to the reservoir. In fact, it was around four years ago when my brother Alex and I made a video about our time fishing this deep reservoir. We worked hard and caught some amazing fish as a result, but unfortunately, it was the drama and politics surrounding this particular lake that became the focus of our film. During the relatively short period of time we fished here, we actually caught quite a lot of the good carp in here, but we never found either of the two big commons. Now, whether or not they are still in here or not, is kind of a, a mystery, but there's definitely a few carp in here which I never managed to catch. My past experience had been a frustrating time, fraught with threats, rumors, and lies, simply because we wanted to fish this incredible venue and make a video about it. Since then though, the dust has settled and a lot has changed. I just can't quite believe it's taken me this long to come back. Oh, look at this place. It has to be one of the most beautiful venues I've fished, in England at least. Most of our success actually came fishing towards the fallen tree on the far side there. However, it's not even in the water anymore because the level has dropped quite a lot recently. So for this session, I'm thinking about fishing further down where it's a little bit deeper and we're a bit closer to the main body of the lake. Setting up, I didn't have a target for this session. I'd be content just existing beside this place. That said, Tom was going to be fishing with me. And since he'd been pre-baiting this area of the lake, I desperately hoped he'd get a reward for his efforts. I mean, with somewhere this big, there has to be carp that we don't know of as well. Obviously, when you go on a lake, you're like, oh, I want to catch that one, I want to catch this one, because you've seen photos that other people have caught, but it's just, it's so big and so rarely fished that really your target fish is the one you don't actually know about. Nearly done. A couple of rods already sorted. That's the last one to set up now. And look who's here. Or nearly here. You can do it, Tom. And he arrives. Hey Carl. Hi. Now to be honest, one of the main reasons I'm even fishing here is because of Tom. He moved down to live in Sussex not long ago and actually he was looking for waters in this area. And I said, well, there is this one place. <laughs> tiny, tiny place. Near this little pond. And the crazy thing is that we're just looking at one tiny part of it. The rest is all around that corner. I can see where the banks end up in the summer as well when it's full of water. That's the other thing is that normally where we're stood would be completely underwater. Right. Oh. I haven't got any bobbins. Where are my bobbins? I should go and get them actually. Did I even bring them? Oh, we're good. Feels like I haven't been carp fishing in ages, but the fact is, is that I have. <laughs> I've actually done a lot, just nowhere close to home. It's all been big trips and far away places. This is the rod that's gonna go. Don't know why, I just feel confident. Well, that's two rods in the water now. And the uh, water in front of us is actually a oh, horrible slimy green color it's actually blue green algae which is more common during the height of summer we're towards the end of october now so it's strange that there's still an algae bloom on the lake i guess it's just because of the crazy warm weather we've had lately however i'm not sure if it's going to affect the fishing i hope it doesn't but it certainly doesn't look pretty
just about to film that bird and then he went away. For quite a while Tom had wanted to live on the south coast. He's sort of dotted around living further up north. I think he lived with his, with his family for a little while. Um, but yeah, moving back down south was, was high on the agenda and the opportunity to stay at mine for a couple of months whilst he looked for somewhere was, uh, was kind of ideal really. We could both help each other out. And one of the first weekends that Tom was staying at my place, we decided to get out fishing. And we went down the local river, somewhere really good for a quick bite. You're in. Oh, run, 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 lift. Oh, that's a carp. <laughs> that's a carp. It screamed off. Oh, I've not had a carp make my back go in ages. It's great. <laughs> oh, wait, that's big. That's actually quite a good one for this river. That was really cool. That was an action pack night. Right? <laughs> it wasn't bad, was it? We went fishing for the first time since you moved house down to Sussex. And we caught a whole load of scrappy little Sussex commons. <laughs> There's not very many rivers in the country where you can do a quick overnighter and almost certainly catch a carp. How many fish did we end up catching? We had six between us, I think. Six carp in an overnight session. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. From a river as well. Your rod's ready to go out? Yep. Into the green pit of doom. Ooh, cheeky. That is a rig. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you're right there, mate. Yeah. We're mostly set up now, but it's kind of weird down here because we're in this sort of lunar landscape. It feels like we're on another planet like with the big sandy, muddy banks and then the luminous green water. Hey Tom. Yo. How would you like me to be your spot goblin? Spot goblin? <laughs> no, I just mean I'm gonna fill your spam up for you. Yeah, yeah. We'll get it done a bit quicker. Also, I did just notice some trickery going on here. It looks a lot like you've got two lines going over one bite alarm. That would be correct. It works though, doesn't it? Is it because your middle one's run out of battery? Yeah. <laughs> Standard. Yeah, I had two batteries die on me on the session that I did at the Park Lake uh, on my birthday. Well, that was quite a long session though, wasn't it? And we did six nights. <laughs> I mean, when I was given the choice by myself to choose what I was doing for my birthday, there was lots of options. Clubbing, partying, rave, festival. I can't think of any other places which I would not enjoy. <laughs> uh, so I chose to go fishing. At the place where I've been fishing quite a lot this year. But I can't really get enough of it. The place is awesome. I love it down here. Awesome. Look at that, they're getting bigger. Whoa. It is grim out there, proper windy. This is carpy weather. This is when you just think it's gonna happen. Yay. Come on, get to work, boy. Got ya. All right, remember to, uh, you know, let go with the old finger this time. Oh, right, okay. No. No. No? No. Oh. In three, two, one. Now. Oh. I think all the pros base up like this. No, oh, they've all got a spot goblin. Guaranteed. Bad one. Oh, you gonna, you're not filming. <laughs> thought you were gonna die, mate. For if, you, if you're gonna choke to death on a roasted salted cashew nut, that would be such a bad way to go. No, it'd be good because cashew nuts are tasty. Uh, he died <laughs> eating what he loved. You sure you're okay? Because I will smack your back really hard. Do it. 
Really? Yeah. Is it still in there? I think so. <laughs> Ow! What are you made of? That hurt my hand. You sure you're okay? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mate, you're like, you're crying. I never thought my friend was gonna choke to death. Well, now you've got choking out of the way. <laughs> and Tom is still alive. Uh, Tom actually told me earlier something quite interesting. When you were getting into carp fishing, didn't you say that you knew about oh. this lake or something? Your video on this place was the first carp film I ever watched. So when my dad-in-law got me into fishing and was sending me like stuff to try and get me fired up on it, Carl and Alex was number one. And it was this particular video, Reservoir Diaries 3. Yeah. Wow, glad something positive came from <laughs> making that film. Because at the time it certainly didn't feel, it wasn't like an easy time, if you know what I mean. Back then, the threatening messages and rumours spread about us very nearly stopped us fishing the lake in the first place. And it disappointed me that some anglers were so unwelcoming towards younger and less experienced fishermen. It's quite mad how the guy who caused most of our hassle down here back then, I'm actually pretty good friends with now. <laughs> when a local park lake suffered an oxygen crash and many of the fish began dying, I was surprised to find that the most willing and enthusiastic helper was in fact the guy I'd had such troubles with in the past. But in the lake's time of need, we set aside our differences and ran pumps to oxygenate the water and save the majority of the stock. During this time, I came to realise the two of us weren't so different after all. Just two passionate anglers who both make mistakes. And equally, two people able to forgive and move on. Two or three years pass and the things that you're worrying about, you probably won't be worrying about anymore. <laughs> Everything passes. Mm. Good and bad. Yeah. But definitely bad. It excites me for what the next sort of six months, year contains. I'm already yeah. obsessed about the place. This is this is my campaign for the next year. No, it's my campaign. Uh, it's my, uh, how about <clears throat> our campaign? Ah, oh, we share. We share the baiting up. No, no, well, what we do is you come down and bait up like a couple of times a week and then I do a couple of sessions a week fishing over said bait. And yeah, well, it, it sounds great. How about I bait up for both of us? Yeah. You supply the bait, we fish it together. Ah, oh, go on mainline. Sponsored boilies. <laughs> <laughs>
campaign got off to the most incredible start. That's a scream. I mean, I was straight in. I just head first, bang, all of a sudden, I'm fishing the park lake. I'm fishing 100 acres of water with like quite a low stock of fish. I'm fishing for a 50 pounder and I'm getting runs every night. And it felt good. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Six kilos of bait went out and I went and had a bite at 11.30 again. They are on it. Then everything came crashing down and I realized that I'm not God's gift to fishing. <laughs> I'm not Terry Hearn or Scott Lloyd. And I blanked quite a lot and I didn't really know what to do. This is exactly what we were after. <laughs> I was obsessed. This period of struggle and lack of action had me wanting to catch even more. There were two giant fish in this lake, a common of almost 60 pounds and a huge mirror too. There is no way. There is no way. There is no way. Oh, it's just come off. No, it hasn't. It's still on. Big. No, that has just come off. Hello. My son is a huge fan of yours. Are you Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I've, I'm sorry, I've just lost a really big fish. Are you filming today as well? Yeah. Nice to meet you. How's it going? This is Oliver as well. How are you doing? Oliver, do you want to have one as well? Yeah. Um, that was my first bite I've had in about a week of fishing. And I just lost it. Nice to meet you guys. Have a great one. Bye. 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 That's the highlight of my I don't even know what to do or say. At this moment, I'm feeling quite good because I've got amongst them again at the park. I've had to do a few things. I've had to like bait spots, leave them alone for a little while whilst the fish get their confidence and then fish other spots. I've had to re-spool all my reels. I've had to buy new rods to, to cast further and to do things and get into zones that I couldn't otherwise fish in the past. But the park has been spectacular as far as the location, the scenes, the fish that I've caught and the, the, the story and the journey that I've been on during my time on that lake is one that I need to tell in a whole nother film, a film that will probably come out next year realistically. If I am not mistaken, I just saw a carp crash because it went the first time I was like, oh, that was a duck. And then I look back and it went again. Okay, that was a carp. <laughs> well, they're not crazy far away. All right, cool, well that was a carp then. Nice, it's game on.
The fishing on the park, I took quite seriously, to be honest. I was going for a fish that would be a PB, and I wanted to keep myself to myself, focus on my angling, and therefore it was kind of quite a solitary campaign. And to make up for that, I dotted throughout my sort of summer and autumn, sessions with other people, sessions with good friends of mine that I knew I would enjoy. Hello. Alex, you're here. Hi, how are you? <laughs> a chance to sort of let off steam, have a good laugh. Welcome to England. And just enjoy my fishing, really. Chub. <laughs> oh! oh! Whoa! Marble on the float, no better way to catch them. Nice. As well as freshwater fishing with my German friends, I also ventured out into the ocean with someone you might recognise. Fish on! Well done, Alex. What? It's in what? Wow! That's a big garfish. What an odd creature. It's really long, isn't it? It was whilst casually filming on Alex's boat that I had an idea for a new project. <laughs> this rod had a savage liner earlier. Well, I don't actually know, it might have been a bite, but probably from a bream or a roach or something. We are gonna catch a carp tonight. Uh, well, actually the reality is, is that we're probably not. So yeah, this little secret project, it's not a secret, I don't know why I said it was secret, uh, is um, vlogging. I decided to buy a little camera. I decided I wanted to share more of my life and, and, and not just upload when I've got a big movie or a nice you know, production. I wanted to upload just to share with you every little twist and turn that this quite exciting life in fishing brings me upon. Like I'm so lucky to do the things I do, get to go to the places I go to and do all the fun types of fishing that I get to do. But I, I want to share it all with you guys. And that is why the vlog channel now exists. I'll put a link in the description to this video where you can go and check it out if you want to. I've already got two vlogs on there, in fact. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, no, that's fine. And stop. <laughs> uh, I'll convert you one day. You'll convert me to Way. hard drugs before, before you convert me to um, Ketchup. Ketchup is disgraceful. Oh my god, so spicy. Spicy? Mm-hmm. What part of it is spicy? What? <laughs> if you catch one on your first night, mm. that'd be so awesome. Even if we just get like the smallest carp in the lake, just first night back, catch a carp. What the hell was that? I mean, that's like that's like nothing I've ever seen in the sky before. Bro. Aliens, guarantee. Yeah, that's it, send them a message. No, Beam no. me up. No. <laughs> Why does this always happen when you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's really dark and it, the place kind of feels haunted anyway? If we never see you again and you find this footage, it was aliens, honest, it must have been. There's no other explanation. What is going on? Tom appears to have hooked something. It's either a very angry bream, which does not exist. But I don't really know what's going on. Didn't think I'd have to... Wait! That's a carp. That's a freaking carp! What? What? That's a carp. What? Well, this is happening. <laughs> that was the weirdest fight of my life! Nice little spin there. 
I'm happy. <laughs> happy to be alive. I'm also really chuffed because Tom absolutely deserved to catch one last night. He's come down here and done a fair bit of pre-baiting recently. And we've all been working pretty hard uh, the last sort of two, three months. Now, the reason I wanted to launch a new channel is because I want my everyday, maybe per <clears throat> personal life and what gets, what we get. So if you are interested in, oh my God. So if you want to see a little bit more of Carl's everyday personal life and shenanigans of what we all get up to, and occasionally a couple of fish, mm. subscribe to the vlogging channel. Yes. Anyway. How dare you? Steal my limelight, present better than me, catch a carp on my show. I'm out. No, if you do want to see more of the sort of <laughs> behind the scenes and stuff, get over to the vlog channel. I'll see you over there. Everybody who subscribes is getting a free um, um, cookie.